much, uh, Professor Hassan. Um, you know, I want to uh, begin uh, perhaps by asking you about uh, the Chief Justice's role, because I know that you're familiar with the history here. In 1982, John Roberts was a young attorney and special assistant in President Reagan's Department of Justice. It was the same year that Congress was debating amending Section 2 to correct a problematic Supreme Court decision, City of Mobile versus Bolden. In City of Mobile, the Supreme Court held that voters challenging voting restrictions under Section 2 must meet the onerous burden of showing that the law was adopted with a discriminatory purpose. It was insufficient, according to the court's decision, to show that it had discriminatory impact. In 1982, John Roberts wrote, I think it was about 25 memos, the Attorney General, which are in the public archives, advocating against an effects test, as it was known. Ultimately, though, his plan failed in 1982. The court agreed with City of Mobile and uh, passed a revised Section 2 that made clear that plaintiffs could challenge voting restrictions by showing they had discriminatory impact. Uh, so, Professor Hassan, in what sense is the court's decision in Brnovich a vindication of then attorney, now Chief Justice's Robert's policy preferences, which Congress rejected outright in revising Section 2 in 1982? Thank you for the question, Senator. I, I do believe that John Roberts from the 1980s and through his history on the court has shown a kind of hostility towards uh, broad protections uh, for uh, racial and ethnic minorities under the Voting Rights Act. Uh, as you said, back in the 1980s, he was the point person for the Reagan administration. It was clear that Congress was going to reauthorize Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act, and the big fight was over what the language of Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act was going to be. Uh, there was big pressure to overturn the statutory decision in City of Mobile, which had effectively rendered Section 2 meaningless as a, as a standard. And Congress, and especially the Senate, uh, in its Senate report, went out of its way to create a functional, uh, localized, totality of the circumstances test to try and figure out, are minority voters being deprived of the same opportunities as other voters to participate in the political process? John Roberts fought against that. Um, he said in, uh, and he lost that battle, and Congress passed a very broad Section 2. In uh, uh, 2009, uh, in the Northwest Austin case, and then in uh, 2013 in the Shelby County case, he showed his hostility to broad voting rights protections, eventually uh, leading the court in striking down the preclearance provision. And in Brnovich, although he wasn't the author of the decision, he has essentially gotten what he wanted in 1982, just many decades later which is a return to something like the intent uh, test. Uh, although Section 2 is not completely eviscerated, uh, the burdens, the roadblocks that the court has put in front of minority plaintiffs should not be underestimated. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Garza, I would like to ask you about the extraordinary events taking place in Texas, but I want to preface it by quoting an exchange that took place in the Supreme Court hearing on Brnovich between Justice Barrett and Michael Carvin, who represented the Arizona Republican Party. Question by Justice Barrett was, quote, what is the interest of the Arizona RNC in keeping out of uh, precinct ballot rules on the books, and Michael Carvin's answer was, because it puts us, the Republican Party, at a disadvantage relative to Democrats, politics is a zero-sum game. Uh, politics is a zero-sum game in that event, uh, and in that case, the pretty obvious acknowledgement was that the goal was, in effect, suppression of votes. So my question to you is, in Texas, uh, for a second time in the last three months, 
Democrats in the state legislature walked out to prevent passage of a voter suppression bill put forward by a Republican majority. Several of those representatives, as I mentioned earlier, visited me in my office this morning. The proposed legislation has a number of provision, including limiting early voting hours, ID requirements, and other limits on vote by mail. Uh, in your experience, how would enacting laws like this one affect the minority communities, communities of color in Texas, people like the clients you've represented throughout your career? So to begin with, um, the stated purpose for enacting these provisions is to avoid voter fraud, but there's been no evidence associated with that. Instead, there has been evidence that where the measures that are being limited and restricted by these proposals have been enacted by local election officials, uh, like, for instance, opening up the time frame for people to be able to vote, that that has increased voter turnout, especially among uh, populations of color. So it's, it, it's pretty... Um, um, there doesn't seem to be a, 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 a nonpartisan grounding for the purpose behind these provisions. They will have an adverse impact on minority voters. Uh, they will make it harder to vote. Uh, and that seems to be their purpose. And that seems to be consistent with the history in Texas, where voting is more considered a privilege than a right. And I've seen over and over again uh, election processes and election rules being interpreted and used in a manner that uh, adversely impacts uh, voters of color. Thank you. I'll turn to the ranking member for his question. 